Kelly Shannon here with AnimalLoveLanguages.com. I'm an animal sensitive and intuitive and a Reiki practitioner and animal communicator. And I am delighted to be with you today to share a grounding meditation that I rely on to help me tune in with my own animals. Of course, tuning in with our own animals is just a little bit different than tuning in with animals that are connected with another human being. We, we tend to feel a little closer to our animals. Our mind tends to be a little more active, a little bit over-involved, if you will. There's a lot of talk about getting the ego or the thinking mind out of the way in animal communication. But what isn't as often discussed is that ego isn't always about feeling like, oh, I'm a rock star. I can totally do this. Animals just talk to me. Sometimes it's about, I can't do this, or I don't feel like I'm getting any information or good information. And so what we really need is a still, quiet, open, receptive mind. If you can encourage your mind to change its job description for a period of time from an idea generator to an idea receiver, kind of like a cell phone tower. Let's just open the airwaves and allow information to come in. And then the mind turns into a wonderful and excellent receiver and a very helpful translator for all of the sensory information that's coming in from your pet. I also taught this technique in my free four-part intuitive pet parent workshop, which you can find under free tools on the animallovelanguages.com website. But I'd like to guide you through it now as well and encourage you to take this example and begin to apply it to your own pet. Just start small, set a timer. So I like five minutes because it gives the mind a chance to rebel and complain for the first minute or so. And then it gives you about three minutes of productive focus and concentration, which is really all that meditation is. When you're focusing and you're concentrating on a specific thing, whether it's a thought or a being or a project or an idea or your to-do list or even going grocery shopping. When you're focused and you're concentrating, you are meditating. Try to lock that in. And then, you know, that last minute or so can be kind of collating and processing and contemplating any insights that arose. So I first learned this technique when I heard a story while I was living in India many, many, many years ago. And I lived in a meditation ashram. I was there to learn to meditate as well as do some local humanitarian service and Meditation was a big part of my life and has been ever since. In fact, I've been meditating since I was 19, but that doesn't mean that meditation is always easy for me. And so when I'm struggling, I often think about this story and it gives me inspiration. I call this story, it didn't have a name when I heard it, but I call this story meditating on your goat. Allow me to share the story with you now. It's one of those stories that once you hear it, it tends to stick in your mind and in your heart, kind of settle itself in your heart. And I hope it will be as helpful for you as it has been for me. A long time ago in India, there lived a man who really wanted to attain enlightenment to know God. He was a simple man, not well-versed in the practices of his day, but he really, really, really wanted to have this experience. So he humbly went to visit a guru, an Indian meditation teacher, and asked him for instruction. The guru gave the man very specific instructions and sent him home to practice. The man was so excited, he practically ran home. He immediately got into the meditation position his new guru had taught him, and he started to focus. But then a mosquito zoomed in and bit him, and it itched, so he scratched it. He got all settled down again to meditate. But then his foot fell asleep, so he had to get up and move around. Once more, he got all settled back into his best and brightest meditation posture. But by then, it was dinner time, and his pet goat was hungry and started to headbutt him. The man gave up. The next day, he went back to the guru and asked for more help, explaining he just couldn't seem to concentrate enough to meditate effectively. So the guru very patiently reviewed everything they'd already talked about and sent him home with additional instructions. Again and again, day after day, the same thing happened. This man got more and more frustrated. Finally, he went back to his guru and he said, I feel like giving up. At this rate, I'll never attain enlightenment. I will never know God. Luckily, his guru was very wise. He said to the man, tell me what you love the most. The man instantly brightened up and said, I love my pet goat the most. The guru said, okay then, 
I want you to go home and meditate on your goat. No matter what comes up, no matter what other thoughts or distractions try to bother your mind, don't give them any attention. Focus only on your goat. The man was delighted. Now this he could do. He hurried home and got all settled into his most beautiful meditation posture. Right away, he started to meditate on his beloved pet goat. He visualized his goat's adorable ears and cute round eyes and button nose and his wonderful bleep and his soft coat and precious little hooves. The man got so absorbed in love for his goat, his heart expanded more and more and more. In an instant, he attained enlightenment. As you allow the sound waves of this story to sink into your being, notice what comes up for you. How are you feeling? Is your mind active? Is it calm and quiet? Do you feel centered in your heart and in the sensation of love between a human animal and a non-human animal? I'd love to invite you to adapt this story and meditate on your own pet or on any animal you feel a great affinity or love for. And just take yourself through the steps. Begin anywhere, begin at the top of your animal or at the bottom or on whatever side feels right to you and start just considering everything from a sensory perspective. What do your eyes see that you love? What do your ears hear that you love? What sense does your nose pick up that you love? How does it feel when you touch your animal, when you pat or stroke your animal? What smells and what tastes, what flavors come up when you're preparing your animal dinner? How would it feel to be your animal engaged in their life, living in their body, seeing through their eyes, hearing through their ears, smelling through their nose, tasting through their mouth and feeling through their skin. You can just do a few minutes. You can extend it a little bit longer if you want to. And at the end of it, just feel into your heart and ponder any sensations, any messages, any images, any words or phrases, or any deep gut knowings that may come up. And consider these messages of love from your pet to you. I am Shannon with Animal Love Languages. You can find us at animallovelanguages.com. It's been my honor to be with you today, and I send you all my love. Okay, bye for now. Thank you.